Welcome back to Coin Sense and Nonsense. Today, it's the Hawaiian Half Dollar, designed by Charles Barber. So, this coin has always been on my wish list, and finally got one. So, as I mentioned, uh, designed by Charles Barber, but it is not U.S. currency. Uh, it was minted in San Francisco and only issued in one year, in 1883. Uh, at the same time as the half, they issued a dollar, a quarter, and a dime. And all have the same basic uh, theme. The reverse is different on all of them, of course. Um, some share similar elements when they can. The dime is kind of small, so it's just a wreath, essentially. Um, but... Just such neat, neat coins. And I wanted to do something different. I just finished my Dead Denomination set. And I thought, why not do this? I wanted to collect some other Barber coins. I do have uh, some other things working. But just always been fascinated by the Hawaiian currency. This and the, the dollar, you know, the paper dollars, of course. But uh, those are outrageously priced as well. So, you know, these the value of this, uh, even in AU55, this is like a five to six hundred dollar uh, coin. And the reason for that is, um, even though the mintage on this particular one, on the half dollar, is 700,000, 612,000 plus were melted um, in 1900 when uh, Hawaii became a U.S. territory. There was like a buyback type program where you could cash in your Hawaiian currency and uh, exchange for U.S. currency and so they melted down what they collected and yeah I guess it's you know helping the values now but it's tragic when you think about all the ones that were melted so um, to get a mint state half dollar uh, Hawaiian half dollar uh, like say MS 62 you're looking at eleven hundred dollars or so so that jumps up pretty quick uh, the quarter is probably the most affordable in high grade um, MS 65 quarters you can get you know for five hundred dollars or so um, and then the dimes, uh, there was about two hundred and fifty thousand minted of the dimes uh, or there was two hundred fifty thousand and uh, less of those were melted, but uh, hardly any are in high grade. Um, so those are definitely very um, valuable or expensive as well. So let's explain some of the design elements here. Uh, this uh, shield, um, or actually it's like the crest essentially of, uh, from the coat of arms. Um, in uh, 1842, King Kamehameha had commissioned the College of Arms in London to design a coat of arms for the Kingdom of Hawaii. And so the um, stripes or the bars there, that is representative of the eight inhabited Hawaiian islands. And then this uh, ball and staff or uh, ball and stick, it's a taboo ball. Um, those were carried in front of the king um, as he traveled like in a procession or whatever and um, also they were uh, put in front of the king's residence and they were symbols of authority and power so and then the uh, center item there that's um, symbolic there was a flag that was similar to that that was um, used on canoes and um, yeah it's just it kind of as uh, a throwback to uh, the uh, cultural heritage and so it's two spears I believe and um, the other taboo stick there so uh, hapalua is half in Hawaiian and so you got half D and then um, the, uh, the motto uh, on the outer part there, the life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. And so I believe that was uh, kind of um, 
lifted or um, condensed from a speech that King Kamehameha had given and uh, became kind of uh, the motto. So very neat history and simple design just like the uh, barber that we know uh, in the US currency. Reeded edge and yeah just cool to have one. Um, I did get some of these um, through my local coin shop and they seemed like they had been cleaned and so I returned them. I didn't want to take a chance on putting them in for grading and then finding out that they were clean. So we'll I'll show you some footage from that uh, just so you can kind of see what, what I was thinking about them being cleaned. There was a lot of deposits and I don't know, just didn't like it. Alright, and so here's one of the half dollars. I was lucky enough to come across uh, three of them. And I'm not quite sure about the integrity of the... Whether these have been cleaned or not. They kind of... Kind of strike me as having been cleaned. We'll check it out on the scope. You can kind of see some scrapes on that one. These are beautiful coins, and they don't come up all that often. I'm tempted to keep them. I do have an opportunity to return these. Uh, but yeah, you can see there's residue there, some evidence that these were dipped or something. So They won't pass muster at PCGS, I don't think. So... It would probably be worth maybe $150 at most in this condition, I would say. Hundred, you know, no more than $200. So, uh, that's too bad. Alright, so here is the king. Well, you can see the residue from uh, where, you know, there's some junk left behind around the edges there. So, to me, that's a sure sign of having been cleaned, unfortunately. So I think I will uh, return this and put the money towards a decent one in a slab. So here's another one and you can see that same junk around the, around there. So definitely uh, cleaned. Let's check out. Yep. So that's yeah, too bad. So this, I think, is super, super cool. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed checking it out. These don't come up um, super often, so uh, happy to be able to share it with you. And um, yeah, we'll see what the next one is going to be. Uh, maybe the maybe the dime, who knows. So they always say to collect the expensive ones first and the the dollar, I'm going to wait until I find one that I really like if I'm going to spend uh, the money. So, um, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching Coin Sense and Nonsense. And until next time, bye-bye.